the knowledge, man. Not necessarily the money. The money is just a tool. So, man, what's good, trappers? It's your boy, the Wall Street Trapper. And I got my beautiful, lovely, brilliant co-host with me, the Queen Jamila, right? She is one of the amazing lieutenants in the Trappers Anonymous community. One of the amazing, one of the most brilliant women I know in general, not even investing wise, just, you know, plus we be sex tripping because you from New Orleans, Queen. Right, right, you already know, you already know. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we had, a, we had a dope session last week where we talked about uh, corporate debt and breaking that down. But I think before we go too further, we fresh into this year. Correct. Right, so I think one of the things that's good for us to do is a, a look back. Let's just take a look back at what we've been through. You mm -hmm. know, 2020 was a hell of a year. One for the record. And 2021 opened with a bang, right? <laughs> We saw the pandemic in 2020. The crazy part about the pandemic of 2020 was we saw a bear market last three weeks. Just gone. No. Unheard of. Right. Unheard of. It had been waiting on that bear market. And, I mean, you had had to wait for a while. Like I had some, I had bread put up. And I realized I ain't had enough. <laughs> nah. <laughs> People don't be realizing why I be saying be patient with this market. Right. Right? Like, the market rewards us for being patient. Like, and it rewards us well for right. being patient. Right? And so when we have, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we had the, the GameStop thing just going crazy. That's why I said... We went from a bang out 2021, like, okay, this is what we're doing. I mean, 2020 to this is what we're doing, to 2020 just jumping out in a frenzy. Like, we two, we three, we crazy. Did. We got a $14 stock hitting $400, and we just like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> right. Whoa. <laughs> like, what's really going on? <laughs> what they cooking? <laughs> right. That's what, what we doing in January? I'm like, this is okay. y'all setting the tone now. Right. So, so and, I, and I think, you know, we talked about it. So I think this was a good, a good time for us to just sit back and say, I right, let's have a look at this roadmap that got us here. Right. Right. So let's 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 talk about some of those instances that happened, right? So we saw the March 23rd collapse. Right. Just boom. But the dope part about that was we saw that the we saw something, and so let's let's even. Let's even talk about how the pandemic opened the gates to a lot of new investors. Major. Which was That's great major. for the culture and overall. An investing period. It was great for, because Huge. then we got exposed mm -hmm. to the power. Yeah. Of the stock market. It wasn't now, excuse my expression for what I'm about to say, it wasn't just a white man sport. Correct. Right? True. You feel that's, me? That's, like, how it's, that's how it's perceived. That's yeah, how it's it wasn't, perceived. It wasn't, all right, it's not just a white man sport no more. No shade to nobody, no. But in our right. culture, we know, when we look at investing, it's like, yo, that's some white people stuff, bro. Right. When, it's, when it comes to Definitely. stock, like, we kind of grab, like, black people, kind of the first thing we want to do is real estate. Let's get into real estate. Yeah, absolutely. That's what's going to get us there. But I think when the pandemic happened, you know, we just opened up to, yo, we can play this. So, and I know me, I doubled down on a lot of the stuff I was doing. Shout out to my brothers at Earning Legion. Shout out to the other platforms. Uh, I think they got a dope brother on YouTube right now, Chris Sane. They got the OG. I forgot the OG name, OG Larry. Um, they got a lot of people out there. Um, um, Ian, the master investor, they have a lot of people out there that's just putting like putting people on game, right? So there's knowledge from everywhere. Yep. Um, and so I think that opened the door, like, yo, like we can really play this game. So right. let's let's before we get into this presence, let's talk about what happened for you in 2020 that, that made you say, because I know you've been investing for a while, you have a corporate background. Yep. Right. So you've been into, I know, 
in our first or second week of doing re-up tools, you talked about how you got into stock options inside of the company, buying options, right. buying stock from the company that you work for, Walmart, right. other businesses, right? So let's talk about something that you saw happen in 2020 that made you say, okay, you saw the tide shifting. Like, tell us something, because you joined the group. You joined the community around that time. Yeah, so really, I had kind of, like I had mentioned, I heard about you the end of 2019. Okay. So as things started to develop in March, I was just sitting here saying, you know what? I wish I had better knowledge on how to systematically and do it consistently, research a business so I would know what move to make. Because I'm sitting here watching it happen and I understand enough about investing at this point to know that this is like a fire sale. <laughs> this is not a 25% a, a off at Saks or this is like, you know what? You can get everything for 80, 90% off. It was, it was absolutely ridiculous. But I also, I understand. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to play in something I don't fully know how to execute in. So I wasn't just going to throw money in, even though I probably could have done it and done all right. But I did say to myself, OK, I may miss the boat on some of these right now, but I'm going to figure out what I need to do to get this down in 2020. And somebody mentioned your name again. And I, I watched a YouTube video of Trapping Tuesday and I was like, perfect. I'm done. That's all I need. And I went to work. <laughs> And I went to work because I was like, when this happens again, maybe not to the degree of, you know, the collapse in March, but I want to be sitting there with my money, knowing exactly which stocks I want, what price I want them at, and just pull the trigger. That's it. Unload the clip. And I think that's important too, because like, even myself, like, so for 08, you know, I'm just being real, 08. I was still in the streets. Right. You know, I had just come home. I wasn't really focused on it that much. So that was my first time really like dealing with a collapse of that caliber. Correct. Now, mind you, in 2018, we had a collapse. Nice pullback, yeah. Yeah, we had something because I got, I was able to get Amazon at 1346. That's nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Real nice. When I first got it, I actually bought it at 1800. Like, okay, it's going to go to at least mm-hmm. 25 and it reversed on me right so I was there, you know it was around that it was around christmas that christmas time right so yeah. that was cool but never to that magnitude correct right that was a full fledged bear market 50 percent just <laughs> like 200 day movement average is just collapsing right you know it was, it was so insane. You know, I had a few thousand dollars. You know, I had maybe about about twenty five, thirty thousand dollars, and that was that wasn't enough. Right, that wasn't enough. <laughs> Hear that? That was not enough. <laughs> Be real, like because I put twenty two thousand. I had about thirty, about thirty three thousand dollars because I put twenty two thousand inside of Chipotle. Got that at four twenty five. That suck at fifteen right now. You know what I'm saying? Fifteen hundred. So. Man. Yeah, and I was like, I need more I need money. Exactly. I need That's more. I need more. I want so, more. I need more. I need <laughs> more. So for me, I'm not so much. I don't because I know there will be another time. It's coming. It's coming. One of the things you said in the previous episodes was the market has to correct itself, and I'm gonna just. That's in anything. Even when I was in the streets, like when prices get too high. A drought got to come. Right. Prices got to correct themselves. The market, no matter what it is, supply and demand. Has to, it has to happen. Because people just get outrageous. The thing pulled the cost 17.5, you charging 27. Yeah. Like, come on, bro, what you doing? I can't make money off that, bro. What are you yeah. doing? Now I got to take a trip. I got to go. Let me get out of there. I'm- right. <laughs> All Listen, I got my own baking soda coming. You feel me? All right, let's go. My own baking soda coming. My own Pyrex dish is coming soon, man. Trap with your boy. You did. Trap or parallel. <laughs> I'm just saying. 
So, you know, the market, and so I think what happens is there's so much noise in during the midst of that where yes, new yeah. kind of don't know, cause it's loud. Yes. They make sure you hit on TV. And now because there's so many people, see when I first got in, it wasn't really that many people. So they didn't have many voices to go to, right? I kind of was the only, you know, black page they had out there talking about stocks at the time, right? Nothing against nobody else at all. But now right. there's so many people were like talking about it. It now makes the noise loud. Yes. Right. So you got people on Instagram, you got people on Facebook, you got people on Twitter, you got people on YouTube, you got people on podcasts, you got the news, you got people on TikTok, you got people everywhere saying this is going on, this is going on. And now the only way you don't get into it is if you have a strategy. Right. You have a blueprint. Or you just not listening to any of it. Correct. I think that's the purpose of our channel. Um, this Wall Street Chapter channel, that's the purpose of what you and I are doing every Tuesday with Rio Tuesdays, is to help people put the blueprint together, yep. right? So I know you got something special. So t- t- tell me what, let's let's talk about one of the, before we get into it, like, because I know yeah, we could just be talking. Yeah, absolutely. Let's talk about about one of your best investments in 2020. I would probably have to say, yeah, Tesla, hands down. Mm-hmm. From a return mm-hmm. standpoint, that was that was probably mm. my best investment. At what price yeah. did you get in at? I got some at, I think around three sixty ish. Okay, so we that talking was- we talking per trap of saying, it's a, go ahead on and get it at the split, yo. Get it at the split. And if it goes down to three fifty, get some more. Okay, okay. Just follow the follow the blueprint. Okay, and as of now, it's at what about eight sixteen? Actually, today, no, I think we're almost 860. Okay, and so that was, and we got that in about September. September, yeah, September. October, November, December, January, February. In five months, you've more than doubled your money. Exactly. I mean, that- let me say this right quick. <laughs> just, just, just listen to this, y'all. And this is why you have to be patient. Yes. If a company has a growth rate of about 15% a year, it doubles every five years. Mm. You did that in five months. Like, just let just let that sink in. And I'm gonna go ahead on a sip on this Wall Street Travel Cup. September, October, November, December, January, five months. Can't argue with it. Can't argue with it. And it's at eight. 77, give or take. And we talking a 15% is great for a business. That's this amazing. company's all okay with doing 5, 10%. That's You're talking about 15%. That's a good business that's dedicated. That's great. To you did that in five months? Five months. Who your mentor is, man? I need to meet that man. <laughs> oh, well, whoever shit, I need to. Shout out to this pink wall trap apparel. Y'all see it. Y'all see it. <laughs> Out, man. That's what we doing. So that's one of the things we did with Tesla too. So I can say, I can say that I can say that Tesla was one of my great ones because I actually did the same thing. We bought actually I bought for me and my daughter. We got in that maybe four twenty four. Yeah, that first bought, price. Yeah, we bought because the goal was okay. It's going to split. Let's lock it in right here. Mm-hmm. Let's just lock this price in right here. Which I did. Yep. And anything that happens below that. So now we set these target prices, which for me was we got at 424. The next best price for me was 350. I really said when I would buy, I'm like, yo, if it's at 424, if it drops to 350, we buy. If it drops to 300 after that, we buy again. Scooping up. At that point, we get our money's worth. And so I did what I said, and we looking real good on it. I think we're going, it was going crazy. But I would say two of my other great, I had three great, great ones that I stuck with. Uh, Chipotle being one and United Rentals, which actually gave me to date, up to date, uh, about 93% to date from, from when it first happened. That's strong. So that was amazing. Um, also, Lululemon. Yeah. Yeah, we got Lululemon at about one thirty-five, and can you tell me the price of it right now? I, think- <clears throat> I want to say it was at three fifty. I'm not sure. I'm about to get it to you right now. 
342. One of my best, I, I listen. So, you know, Ew. we do some things and <laughs> that's what we do over here. Man. Right. <laughs> big I mean, trap. You know, if it's big trap, I mean, we not out here saying, get this, get that, get this, get that. Right. We are right. now a, one that I did put out there on market Mondays when I did the thing with Rashad and them, I put okay. two of them out there. The two I pulled out that was Crown Strike. Yep. And Service Now. You looked at my presentation, didn't you? I didn't. <laughs> I feel like you looked at my presentation. I didn't. And, and, and they are performing well. So, you know, it's just saying, I'm your favorite trapper, favorite trapper. What can just I saying, do? just saying. So let's get in. So you got something real dope for us on this lovely Tuesday. Uh, let's let's see what we got, Queen. Let's. It's your screen. I got the screen ready for you to share. To Drop that screen. dope on us. <laughs> they not ready. They not ready. They not ready. So as we always start out with a little disclaimer for everyone, make sure that uh, y'all know what it is. We are here for educational purposes only. Listen. I am not a fiduciary or financial advisor. Me, just the queen. Everything that we say in these breakdowns are for entertainment and educational purposes only. Uh, take none of what we say as what you should be doing, right? Like only as mere things that we like to look at. Know that with all investing comes risk, and you must be able to properly mitigate the risk in order to be a successful investor. If you aren't able to properly mitigate the risk, you must seek out financial or fiduciary advice. Someone who does things for the so-called the betterment of you as an investor. Yes. Again, we are not financial advisor or fiduciary, but I do know one. Just one. Just one. By the name of Rashad. He is part of the Earn Your Leisure team. He can take you to glory. We can only take you to the trap. Trap house. Try that with me. <laughs> Go, you already know. You already know. So today we're going to, like I said, take a look back, right, to 2020. Because this one's gotten off, you know, just to a phenomenal start. A lot of frenzy, a lot of crazy, a lot of talk. We want that to settle down a little bit. Quiet the noise just a little bit and get down to what we really need to be focused on from a broader perspective, not necessarily an individual stock, but from a broader perspective to help you guys make some great decisions in 2020 for your portfolios. So looking back, S&P 500 finished up 16% on the year after a 34% correction in March, right? 34% and still finished up 16% on the year. Like that. That's it, just. It was whipping. It was. It that's was so whipping. strong. <laughs> that's how you bounce back. Right. That's how you get the bounce back. <laughs> that's real blue magic right there. Man. Right. Just you know something I've personally not seen happen that way. Right. Oh wait, it took a minute. Um, this is is amazing, and and I think what made it even more amazing was the fact that we were still shut down. It wasn't as if there was some type of economic, like, you know, thing that now we're open and things are back to normal. We were still shut down. We didn't enter, you know, those phase ones until going into May. So it was incredible what happened. So these are a couple, couple of the highlights. There were tons of highlights. There's so many things that we could have said as far as like, what were some key things that happened in 2020? Well, number one, the VIX, right? So that's the volatility index, right? It's put out by CBOE. That's the Chicago Board of Options Exchange. And this is a volatility index. It hit 85, the second highest in history, right? And it basically just represents, for everyone to understand, the 30-day forward-looking volatility of the market. They derive it from the S&P 500 index options. It provides a measure of market risk and investor sentiments. Sometimes they call it the fear gauge, right? Or the fear index. So it hit 85. Extreme. 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 And so if you go look at the chart, 
If you look at the whole chart in the history of the chart, you're going to see a spike and a spike. This was one of those major spikes where it hit the top. Incredible. We had negative oil prices. Negative oil prices. That was truly his historic in April when we had negative oil prices. Like, future stop trading. It was just, I was just like, man, this thing is like watching the Super Bowl every day because <laughs> it just did not stop during that period as far as things that were happening. We kind of thought the oil, I was like, man, if you, like, if you invested in Exxon, like, the oil industry caught hell. That was murder. Now, they caught hell. Like OPEC was in a meeting every other day. <laughs> every other day. What you talking about? What you talking about? They going back and forth. Like it was, I'm telling you, it was like watching, I don't know, like reality TV for the stock market. It was crazy. Yes. One of the craziest things I've seen ever. I don't know if we'll ever see anything like this specifically again. And then of course we had a trillion dollar stimulus package, a massive, a massive trillion dollar stimulus package and interest rates are on the floor and the Fed has alluded to the fact that they're going to be there a minute. So all of this is happening in 2020. Some of this is carrying over into 2021. So, but it's important to understand those couple of big highlights, right? So then when we look at the S&P specifically, something called the spider ETFs, right? That represent, each of them represents the specific sectors in the S&P. So they mirror it. So this is not exactly the S&P, but they mirror the companies by sector. Mm -hmm. So this one I'm sharing basically is going to tell you the total returns. And I've highlighted the one year returns. And this is as of December 31st. So if you look, the big winners, XLK, which is the technology spider ETF, plus 43% on the one year. So in that entire 2020, they were up 43% technology. Then consumer discretionary, XLY, mm -hmm. up 29%. And then consumer co communication services, up 26%. And of course, the big loser, as we just talked about, energy, down 32%. And you can see on the rest of this chart, you got a three, five, 10 year and since inception, but we really want to zoom in on 2020, right? And why it's so important to look back is because, you know, we expect certain things to continue to happen. We would like for certain things to continue to happen in the market, but there's not a single solitary person on this earth that can guarantee that we're going to duplicate any one thing or it's going to go any one way. It's just not possible. But as much history as you can consume, as many correlations, you can improve the probability that you know what's going on in the market. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want to try to give you today. So inside of those sectors, here's some of the winners. We got technology services and software. As Trap mentioned, ServiceNow. Well, now, I, I, listen, I didn't know you was gonna have I that. know you didn't know. That's what I'm sitting here saying, like, wait, hi. <laughs> you didn't even know. <laughs> Plus 95% on ServiceNow. And we're gonna we're gonna spotlight them a little bit later. Synopsis plus 86%. And again, I didn't necessarily highlight all the top winners, but I just wanted to give you guys just a little flavor. Internet retail, Etsy, 302%. Amazon, 76%. Something we don't really talk about too much. Mm. Basic materials, right? Mm -hmm. It's not a sexy sector slash industry. Definitely not that, a sexy one. It's not. You got ALB plus 103%. And copper and silver specifically did really well. And we know that silver is now in the Reddit hands, right? I'm going to call it they in the Reddit hands right now, right? Then engineering construction, you had Quanta Services, symbol PWR, plus 77%. Semiconductors, one of my favorites, NVIDIA. Me and Jensen, we have a relationship. I like Jensen. 121%. And DACO New Energy, DQ, plus 422%. Again, I didn't necessarily highlight all the high flyers in the market, but I just wanted to give you a flavor of some of the winners and also let you know that there were some winners in some sectors that really get no publicity. Here are a few of the losers. Of course, oil and gas, BP negative 46%. Diversified banks, Wells Fargo. And I know y'all been watching Well Watching Wednesdays and you heard Trap talk about some of these whales. Come on now. Buying. Wells Fargo. 
Come on now. The Reds have been buying Wells Fargo, and they had a 44% correction, or excuse me, drop in their share price last year. Mm -hmm. And Trap was saying, I, I'm not quite sure what they see, right? I, I didn't see it. I don't see it either, right? But again, depending upon when they bought it, Mm -hmm. This may be a year in the making type of plan and strategy that they have for their portfolio, and we'll see it unfold this year. So I'm definitely not saying go invest in it, and neither is Trap. But it was one of the biggest losers. That's then from a real estate standpoint, you got real estate specifically retail, Simon Properties, negative 41%, right? Which, again, part of what's hurting them specifically is the malls, right? You all know it. I mean, now granted, I do see a, a few too many people in those parking lots here lately, but that doesn't necessarily mean that everyone's making their lease payments, right? Or their rent payments every month. And they took a hit. I'm gonna just be real. I, I'm a owner. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm about 250 shares in, but it's okay. You know, I understood I bought it for the dividend. Right. Um, I do, I will say that I think that within the next 10, 15 years, I think that mall, in-store mall spending will decrease drastically. Yeah. Um, I think what's holding, what's gonna keep companies like maybe Simon Property afloat is the actual, because they are luxury brand malls. Okay, yeah. Premium, premium malls. And no matter how much money people spend online, mm -hmm. people still love to go in and get that. You know what that I'm saying? Feel. Yeah. So I that think, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think we'll see a lot of their, I will see a lot of big things closing down. Yeah. In the next 10, 15 years. 100% I agree with that. Yep. And then you got airlines, of course. You know, that cash burn, man, that just... I looked at one other day, they was burning 60 million a day. That's like the $60 million a day just in yeah. thin air. Yeah, they was burning 60 million a day. And so I want to say something too when we talk yeah. about that. Let's tap into what they actually mean by cash burn. There you go. Let's break that down. So what it costs to just have the plane sitting, not making money. Yeah. Right, having to uh, pay, see, because with the airline industries, it's so much attached to that. You talking rental space, like inside of the, the airline itself. Right. Like you have to pay to be there. Correct. Like don't let that, don't think they just get to be there for free. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you have to pay to be there. That burn uh, just what it would cost for that plane not to move around every day. Yes. That's a cost. That's a fee. Then yes. you still have people working that you have yes. to pay all like you have to pay, which is why the layoffs and the mm -hmm. uh, furloughs. Correct. All that's part of that cash burn yes. taxes that you still got to pay all the equipment. All of that comes into that. These planes Maybe. need to be moving. You know? Airport hangers. Airport hangers. Like, yeah, it's a lot that comes with that. So a lot you of, it's a lot of money. 60 million a day. Listen, it's real. This is a real thing. <laughs> and United down 52% in 2020. And then ultimately aerospace defense, Boeing, who makes those planes, Woo! down 36%. Mm. Now, Traps talked about this on lives, on just everywhere, and definitely in Trap is Anonymous. Boeing sits in a slightly different position than those airlines. That's right. So, y'all have heard him talk about it. I've heard him talk about it. That defense part of what they do and those government contracts, while down negative 36% at this point in time, with the backlog and how long it takes for them to produce commercial planes, they're not about to go out of business no time soon. One hundred percent, and not happening. I, and so people, a lot of people were looking at Airbus, and I yeah. was like, 
but Airbus is taking a hit too. It's not just yeah, Boeing. Absolutely. Right? It was manufacturers taking a hit because people were like, yo, if we, we don't know when we're coming out of this. Right. You know what I'm saying? So everybody took a hit. And so for me, it was like, okay, Boeing was almost a $400 stock before the, the crash. Yep. Um, it was tipping to it. So for me, I figured if they can get that worked out, which it takes time. One of the things yeah. that they, they made a lot of adjustments in management. Yep. Um, and then when the pandemic happened, when the market fell, I watched it go all the way from 150 to 89. It's a no-brainer for me. Right, 89. Not 90, but... 89. At this point, I felt like I was getting it at an extreme because at the time I even mentioned it, 115, 125 was my discounted price. Right. That's where you wanted to get in. Yeah. <laughs> right. And got it. 89. So I remember coming into the group saying, Boy, look real sexy right now. <laughs> <laughs> Drop it. And then, yes, it, it fluctuated a little bit. And then we had that nice pop. Yeah, I think it got all the way up to like 225. Right. 230. Nice. From 89? I wasn't mad at it. And I think right now it was hovering around like 195 or something. Right. I'm okay with it. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm sure you are. <laughs> and anybody else that jumped <laughs> on that trap is anonymous. <laughs> right. So then... One of the things that I wanted to share with everyone is a five-year weekly correlation chart for those spider select funds, right? So it's important to know kind of what moves together, so up or down, so what moves together up or down, and then what moves opposite of each other. So if one's going up, the other one's going down, and vice versa. I thought it was important so that you can take this filter and say, okay, well, if if I hear, you know, consumer discretionary is having a great day, well, what tends to move opposite of consumer discretionary, right? And you can see clearly on here, XLY consumer discretionary, the real estate sector and utilities tend to move in an opposite, opposite direction. And again, this is just five years back through 2019, but this will start to give you an idea of how to build out your portfolio. Not that you're just buying ETFs, but you may want to buy opposing and or correlated sectors. So I highlighted a few that I thought were interesting. So XLY and XLC. So you got consumer discretionary and consumer, I'm sorry, communication services are highly correlated at 0.82. So the higher the number, the more they move together up or down. Energy and utilities, I thought was interesting. Moving opposite of each other. Financials and industrials, highly correlated, highly correlated, meaning they go together. They move together at 0.84. Then I have real estate and energy move in opposite directions. And then technology and consumer discretionary, highly correlated. And those are just a few. You can take a snapshot with your phone or what have you and, and, and really dig into this. So as you're watching the individual companies in your portfolio and or ETFs, and you're watching them move day to day, you start to understand what type of day. So if the market's having one kind of day, you kind of have an idea of what's gonna be happening in your portfolio. And then you can make adjustments accordingly to better balance and diversify yourself so that you can move forward and get this money, right? One share at a time. Lastly, gonna share again, not sure if Trap has got my house bugged or what. <laughs> he Listen. has no idea. He has Listen. no idea. <laughs> he has no idea. I'm not David sure Trapp. I'm gonna have to get the house swept. <laughs> David Trap is David Trap out here. You feel me? <laughs> Bill McDermott is my guy. You feel me? He the coolest CEO out here on these streets, man. Real deal. So we'll start with CEO Bill McDermott. He took SAP's SAPS market cap from 39 billion to 156 billion. 
He spent 17 years at Xerox and Gardner and, and Siebel as well. Again, just a quick little highlight on Bill, but if you can take somebody's market cap and five, just about five exit, that, that's saying a whole lot about what you can do to grow a company. And it's showing up already in their revenue. So revenues, the last five year annual growth, 38%, 38% growth. EPS, 11 straight beats. We talked about gross margin in one of those first episodes. Their gross margin is 78%. 78%. Jeez. 78%. Yeah. That's better than 83% of its competitors. Right? So they've got a built-in advantage on how they're going to turn that money, that revenue into profit for you, for the company and the shareholders. That's ultimately why those 11 straight beats, it's like this. They're just cranking it out at 78% margin. Current price target on the high is 662, midpoint 596, and the lowest 388. 19 buys, three holes. Current price as of today, 586, market cap 114. And again, last year, 94, 95% growth in the stock price for service now in Trap's favorite CEO, Bill McDermott. Listen, this is the Bill business. Is our guy, man. These are the coolest the guys on these streets, man. <laughs> it's real. His ability to just think and see next level. And I, I don't think we see or pay attention to, to like what service now is doing between them and Align Technology. Right. You know, the people who make Avisalign. Right. Um, those are two companies um, that just don't want to go on discount for me. <laughs> they just keep running. They don't, want, they don't want to cooperate. They just keep running. I feel like I'm in, in a Chipotle play all over again. All over. History repeating itself. Didn't it? But I promise this time I will have enough. <laughs> I will have enough if I gotta empty out some other clips. <laughs> I mean, because great CEOs have great strategy, they have great marketing ability, but most importantly, they have great teams that know how to service mm. and, 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 and give their mm. consumers, they understand who their ideal client is. Correct. Right? And they know how to, like great businesses learn how to service their ideal client well. Um, and I just think Bill just, man, is is. Bill has one of those, this is unbelievable. 80, listen to that, 83%, better than 83% of his competitors, yo. Bill's that guy, man. You can That's catch him on, position. You can catch him on a, on, a, on a channel near you with the sunglasses <laughs> on, yo. With sunglasses on. <laughs> so that's what I have for the trappers out there today. I hope that helps taking a look back and also give them a tool to kind of look forward as well when they're watching this market move day to day and ultimately understand how to build out a great portfolio. We got something coming for them on that as well soon. Dig, dig. So I think this was a dope um, episode because it's always good for us to look back um, and look back and understand things that could have happened. Hindsight is always 2020. They always say that, right? Yep. I think as an investor, hindsight is something you can learn from. Um, even with life, we look back and we learn from things that we've done and moves that we've made along the journey. But what happened is I think we can look at these things and say, okay, like even if I second guess myself and certain, and I'm saying I speaking as right. we are told, if you second guess yourself a couple of times, it's okay. Even the greatest investors second guess themselves, right? Absolutely. Um, it happens because let's just say this. Overall, nobody knows what this market is going to do. Nope. Like nobody has the crystal ball. I got a Pyrex bitch, but it ain't a crystal ball. Right. <laughs> and so what happens is we base decisions off of uh, research, homework, um, and the lack of it leaves you confused. Um, learning how to look at patterns, learn how to see what has happened before knowing that the market will always do what the market has done. Let that sink in. The market will always do what the market has done, right? So that means anything that is done already, it's a good chance it'll do it again. 
Um, that's basically yeah. is what that means. And, and once we understand that, we can now become a little more confident. We can become a little more uh, dedicated. We can become a little more um, encouraged in being a great investor. Um, so one of the things I want everybody to do, you, if you would love for me, myself, and the queen, um, just to be a little more involved with you all, man, check us out at Travels Anonymous, man. It's a group of us, man. We're over 3,200. Today, I put a dope kick assemble Tuesday up. Uh, that's inside of the group. Uh, and the goal is for us in the group is just to continuously help each other, um, help everyone grow, um, and just expand um, a community of like-minded investors. Yep. Um, so I would love for everyone to just join that. Um, tell us what you got, Queen. Man, I this part of it, this was probably one of the most uh, fun to do, right? Because I want to I want to stack the deck in my favor. Mm. right i want to stack the deck in my favor because again nobody can predict which way it's gonna go but the more information that i have looking back the history correlations the better probability i have of success mm -hmm. so i hope everybody catches those correlations as well as understanding the big macro events that happen along the way and look back and see how it affected certain sectors. So when you're hearing news, like you said, about OPEC doing X, Y, or Z, whether you're in oil or not, it's important to hear that information because you also know the opposite correlation of when energy is going to be down, you can have an idea of what should be running. That's all I'm going to say. Now, nah, listen, that was amazing. Break on <laughs> insight. It's another classic episode of Re Up. Tuesdays, y'all. Me and the Queen coming to you all each and every Tuesday just to give you all some game, right? Just to help you be able to break that breakdown of all dimes. That's right. Yeah. This is, I'm dropping my own Pyrex dish. Yes. I'm dropping my own baking soda. And it's only for investment purposes only. 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 Investment purposes only. Only. This is a sign of saying trap. <laughs> I'm in the kitchen cooking. You feel me? Cooking it up. Uh, yeah, man. So we definitely appreciate you, Queen. It's always an honor. Um, I kind of be feeling like when I'm on here with you, I feel like I'm your co-host. Cool. <laughs> feel like I'm. Like, that's okay. Like I'm always Mike. I'm always Mike. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like D Wade when he when LeBron came over, <laughs> right? I be feeling like D Wade when LeBron came right. over. You gotta pass the ball. Like yeah, man. Like you run the show. I'm gonna just throw a few ad libs in here. Right. You know? <laughs> I, I'm going to let you run the show. You know what I'm saying? So, Appreciate you, King. Um, but that shows the confidence I have in you. Um, and, and, I, and I don't mind, especially I'm going to say this now, I don't mind shine, sharing a spotlight or giving a spotlight to someone who I know has put in the work, someone who I know ain't just saying, yeah, trap, let me come, I'll do it with mm -hmm. you. And, you know, you're not going to give it your all. So I just want to tell you, it's always an honor for me to be able to do these. I look forward to us growing and building this moving forward. So again, before we go, I just want to tell everybody, thank you, Queen. Shout out to the Queen. Man, I want y'all to tap in each and every Tuesday because Queen, you make us all look good. And this, <laughs> this pink you looks see. good on you. You see. Good. <laughs> you see. It's all love. All love. Uh, but thank you, Queen. We appreciate you, man. We'll see y'all all next week on Re-Up Tuesday. Don't forget tomorrow is Well Watching Wednesday. We got some more heat coming for y'all, man. So do me a favor, man. Like and subscribe to this. And tell somebody to tell somebody, man. We your favorite trapper's favorite trapper, man. It's your boy, the Wall Street Trapper. That's my queen, man. The wow. queen, man, Jamila. Uh, one part of uh, the Wall Street Trapper family, man. We'll see y'all next week, man. Trap with us. Yeah.